Virtual Desktop is an amazing app that allows you to play all your PC VR games wirelessly on your standalone MetaQuest headset. So I'm going to show you how to install Virtual Desktop in two easy steps. Then I'll go through what I think are the optimal settings to maximize your experience in VR with this app and show you my ideal hardware setup to really push the performance of Virtual Desktop to its limits. And then we might talk about codecs at the end if you haven't fallen asleep by then. You will need a VR ready PC or laptop to do this. Before we start, I will be focusing on how to install and set up Virtual Desktop on my MetaQuest 3, but this process works with the original Quest, Quest 2, Quest 3S, Pico Neo 3 Link, Pico 4, and Pico 4 Ultra. I've broken the video down into four sections. One, installing Virtual Desktop on your headset and PC in two easy steps. Two, recommended settings in headset and on the PC streamer app. Three, recommended hardware setup to optimize virtual desktop. And finally, four, we'll discuss the various OpenXR runtimes and available codecs. I've inserted chapters into this video so you can jump to the part that interests you the most. You're welcome. Okay, let's get into it. Part one, installing virtual desktop in two easy steps. Step one, open the Meta Store on your Quest headset, search for virtual desktop, purchase and install it. The app costs £18.99 in the UK, but you can get a 10% discount if you use my referral code, which I've linked down below. I'm going to say this because I get asked every time I make one of these videos. You must buy the MetaQuest version of Virtual Desktop from the MetaQuest or Pico Store, either in headset or via the phone app. This is the only version that allows wireless game streaming to your standalone headset. Step two, go to the Virtual Desktop website here, Download and install the Streamer app. This app is essential as it acts as a bridge to your PC, making it think it's connected to a virtual server. And that is a very basic description of a very clever solution. But hey, I'm a bit of a thicky. That's it. How easy was that? You can now go off and play all your PC games wirelessly right now. But I would suggest you watch the next part so that you can optimize your experience. Okay, moving on. Part two, recommended settings for the PC streamer app and VR app on the headset. Everybody's PC setup is different. So the next stage is to start tweaking these settings for your PC hardware. So we'll start here with the streamer app. On your desktop, click on hidden icons, highlight the streamer app, tap right click and open settings. You can also pin the app to your taskbar like I have here. Accounts, click change, then input your Oculus, Pico or Vive port usernames. Bindings gives you hotkey options for switching between monitors and VR. Options copy the settings I have. I would highly recommend you check the start with windows and start minimized in tray boxes as this will prevent you from trying to connect. Then remembering the streamer app isn't running. Also, one important box that needs to be ticked is automatically adjust bitrate, which was recommended by the developer Guy Godin as shown. Media. This tab allows you to add any videos that you have on your PC, which you can watch on a giant screen in VR. Finally, the About tab, which details your PC specs and allows you to check for interfering apps. Click that and check your firewall, antivirus or other overlays aren't getting in the way. You can also check the version number in the bottom left corner to make sure you are running the most up to date software. And that's it for the streaming app for now. Let's jump into VR on your headset and go through my optimum settings. Computer tab. Look at the top left. It will show you the PC you are connected to and your connection speed. 802.11 AC or Wi-Fi 5 should be up to 866 megabits per second. 802.11 AX or Wi-Fi 6 should be up to 1200 megabits per second. If you own a Quest 3, 3S or Pico 4 Ultra and have Wi-Fi 6E router, you should be getting a frankly ridiculous 2400 megabits per second. Settings tab is purely for your desktop view, so it's not that important. However, I would recommend you uncheck the use optimal resolution, even though it says recommended. I use twin 4K monitors and it really messes with your desktop resolution. Streaming tab. This is the important one and is where you will spend most of your time fiddling to get the optimal settings for your hardware setup. VR graphics quality. Simple this one. Just pick the setting nearest to your GPU spec. If you're running a GTX 970, I am running an RTX 4080, so Ultra. 
VR frame rate. I run at 90 frames per second, so that's what I'd recommend for now. You can always go back and change it later. For example, if I fancy a bit of sim racing on Automobilista 2 or Assetto Corso Evo, I run at 72 frames per second to ease the load on my GPU and maximize the graphical fidelity because as you know, I am a massive graphics tart. Like I said, you can always go back and change it later and when it all goes wrong, just hit the reset to default button here. VR bitrate. If you have checked the automatically adjust bitrate tab on the streamer app, virtual desktop will set this according to your network's Wi-Fi strength. Sharpening. I leave this at the default 75%. VR pass-through allows limited mixed reality in certain games. Leave this unchecked for now. Gamma. Again, leave it at the default 1.0. Synchronous Space Warp or SSW. If the frame rate drops below a critical mark, SSW automatically renders only half of the frames and every second frame is generated artificially. Currently, I have this disabled as it can cause shimmering and distortion in some games. I find it better to tune a game to run at your preferred frame rate using the streamer tab, in-game graphics settings and virtual desktops performance overlay, which I will talk about in a second. Snapdragon Games Super Resolution, an ingenious technique which automatically upscales an image to increase detail utilizing the Quest's Snapdragon XR2 chip with no apparent hit in performance. Make sure this is checked. Video buffering. This can reduce micro stutters but adds a lot of latency. My preference is to uncheck this box. Center to play space. Checked. Track controllers. Checked. Forward tracking data to PC. Unchecked. Increase color vibrance. Checked. Increase video nominal range. I think this makes dark spaces way too dark, so I leave this unchecked. Show performance overlay. As mentioned earlier, this is a great tool for fine tuning your settings in real time. Use this to see where your system is bottlenecked and make the appropriate changes. And that's it. Please bear in mind these are my settings optimized for my PC. Everyone's system will be different, so maybe use these as a base for setting up your PC then fiddle away to your heart's content. I know there are a lot of advanced users out there who are right now reaching for the Warriors keyboard, but please bear in mind this is a tutorial for beginners. So be nice, please. Remember, if it's all gone wrong, just hit the reset to default button or virtual desktop now as an AI assistant, which you can use to help solve your problems. I also have a Discord server with a dedicated helpline. Link in the description down below. So go there and myself or a wonderful member of my community will help you out. Let's move on. Part three, recommended hardware setup to optimize virtual desktop. Before we go any further, I get a lot of comments that say, I can't do this because my internet speed is bad. But listen to this, virtual desktop is not interested in the slightest in your internet speed. It is only concerned with the strength of your Wi-Fi signal, which you can check here. Your PC must be connected to your router via an Ethernet cable and your Quest must be connected to the 5 or 6 GHz Wi-Fi channel of that router. No ifs, no buts. It will not work if this is not strictly adhered to. That is the base setup. The ideal setup is to have a second dedicated router connected via Ethernet to your main router just for virtual desktop. I have this TP-Link Archer AEX75 Wi-Fi 6E router specifically for virtual desktop, which is a bit of overkill to be honest. You could pick up a much cheaper Wi-Fi 5 router, just make sure it has gigabyte LAN ports. I've had people complaining that they cannot get an ethernet cable to their PC because of where it is. Well, I work from a garden office and ran an ethernet cable through the house, through the garage, into my office. But if this is not possible for you, for whatever reason, then you need one of these, a power line adapter. This clever little device uses your house's electrical wiring to get internet to anywhere in your house that has a domestic electricity supply plug. Plug it in next to your main router, connect via ethernet, then plug the other box into a socket near your gaming PC and connect with an ethernet cable. I used these for years before I ran my cable and found them to be easy and reliable. Part Four, open XR runtime and available codecs. On the PC streamer app, the developer has added a new runtime called VDXR, which bypasses Steam VR runtime and gives extra performance. In some tests, users found an increase in performance as high as 10 frames per second, 
which is really impressive. If you are using VDXR, however, you will lose all SteamVR functionality like streaming overlays and the recenter play space button because it has been bypassed for that extra horsepower. So if your game doesn't have a recenter to play space button, you may struggle a little bit. Now let's get on to the topic of codecs, which if you're still here, must mean you're a proper geek. And I salute you. As I stated earlier, I'm a graphics tart, so I'm not bothered about a bit of extra latency as long as I get all the shiny things. So in this section, I've played the exact same chapter of Half-Life Alex, which is still one of the most demanding, graphically stunning games in VR, even five years after it launched. I've tried my best to replicate my actions so that you can see the effects of changing codecs in real time. Also, so that there is no variation, I have unchecked the automatically adjust bitrate tab on the streamer app and banged the bitrate up to its maximum. H.264 is the oldest codec and will give you the lowest latency at 200 megabits per second maximum. H.264 is a more modern version and provides up to 500 megabits per second with slightly increased latency. HEVC and HEVC 10-bit will give better graphical performance at 200 megabits per second, but latency is marginally higher. AV1 10-bit can only be used with a MetaQuest 3, 3S or Pico 4 Ultra and an RTX 40 or 50 series graphics card. At 200 megabits per second, latency is higher than the other codecs, but as a graphics tart, you do get all the shiny things. In conclusion, Virtual Desktop is an essential purchase, in my opinion. Being able to play any PC VR title wirelessly on your Meta, Pico or HTC headset is very freeing, with no cables to trip you up or get tangled up in. If you are very lucky, me and have access to a MetaQuest 3, an RTX 4080 GPU and Wi-Fi 6E, it just goes beyond the bounds of incredible, running the VDXR runtime and the AV1 10-bit codec. But as always, what do you think? Are there any settings you would change? Are you sticking with your free Meta Airlink? Have you ever used a wireless streaming service? You know the drill. Get involved and comment down below. Well, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this content, please hit the like button. The algorithm loves the likes. If you loved this content, please subscribe and join my channel membership like these lovely people did. You get custom badges, emojis, and an exclusive members only channel on my Discord. If you want to watch more content from me, you can click here or here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the other side.